Welcome back to Tightwad Workshop. In this video we'll be flattening the sole of our plane using some of this cloth-backed sandpaper. We'll be gluing the sandpaper onto this slab of fake stone, so let's do that first. This is a can of cheap spray adhesive from a $2 shop. Shake the can well, then apply a generous coating to the stone. Apply the sandpaper sheet. Then use a piece of plywood to press the sandpaper firmly against the stone. If we turn the assembly over, the weight of the stone will help hold the sandpaper in place. Plus a couple of house bricks, just to be sure. While we wait for the glue to dry, here's a quick safety tip I forgot in the last video. Anytime you're going to put the plane away, retract the blade first. This will protect the blade from accidental damage and your hands from accidental cuts. Here's another handy tip. Metal bodied planes usually have a bit of friction against the wood that you're planing. Use a wax candle to draw a squiggle on the base of the plane. This will give some lubrication to the base and you'll really notice the difference. Our cheap plane has moulded plastic handles, and the mould join lines are a little bit sharp. If you leave those in place you're almost guaranteed to get blisters, so let's use a sharp tool to remove them. We already spent some time grinding the edge of the chip breaker in the previous video. But even with our best work, you'll still sometimes get chips between it and the cutting iron. It's a good idea to check and clean this area from time to time while you're planing. And if you keep your sharpening station nearby, then any time you have the blade assembly apart, you can give it a quick hone and strop before you put it back together. Now that the glue's dried on our sandpaper, let's see if we can flatten this base. The nose of the plane and the area just behind the mouth really need to be flat, but the rear two-thirds of the base is less critical. Make sure that the blade and lever cap are in place and the blade's fully retracted. You need to do this because even though the base is made from cast iron, it still flexes a little when you tighten the lever cap. This is a 250 grit sheet of sandpaper, so let's see if it works. As you can see, only the outer edges of the base have been in contact with the sandpaper. I'll use this marker pen to colour the whole surface of the base. To do the job properly, we need to keep going till all that marker pen blue is removed by the sandpaper. This black powder is the cast iron grinding. You can see the shiny areas are getting wider, but we still have a hollow between them. After another 15 minutes or so I'd worn out the 250 grit sandpaper, so I decided to make a glueless grinding board. Now that I know how much material we need to remove, I'm using 80 grit sandpaper. So here's the result after 15 minutes of work on the 80 grit paper. As you can see, we've finished flattening the important areas, so now I'll switch to 120 grit to smooth that surface.
That's not quite perfect, but I'm going to call it good enough. Remember how I mentioned you need to have the blade and lever cap in place? Let's just do a quick test on our newly flattened surface without the lever cap. I'll put a fresh squiggle on the shiny parts. Now I'll just give it a few strokes with very light pressure. As you can see, it's removed the marker lines behind the plane's mouth, but left the lines at the front. To be honest, that's more dramatic than I was expecting. I'll give it a few more for luck. Still the same result. Well, there you have it. Always remember your blade and lever cap when flattening. I've reassembled the plane, let's give it a post-tune test. Not quite enough depth of cut. Maybe a little too much. That one's Goldilocks. Edges are easy, so now let's try flattening a board. Sorry about that, I got a bit carried away in the moment there. Eh? As we all know, to be a proper YouTube woodworking channel, you need a big shelf full of planes behind your bench. Here's a collection of rusty relics I'll be using for my plane shelf. Please leave your vote in the description for which one gets restored first. Tightwad Workshop is filmed in front of a live studio audience.